In today's episode of Pacific Coast 101, let's talk about camping and places to stay along the route. There is nothing better than rolling into your campground after a long day in the saddle. And if you're riding the Pacific Coast bike route, you are in luck because there are some awesome campgrounds along the entire coast. And some of them you do not want to miss. The first thing you need to know is that some states have a no turn away policy in their state parks for cyclists. As of 2024, Washington State is the only state along the coast that has this policy. Washington State Parks are required to have an area set aside to accommodate cyclists even if the hiker biker spots are full. I'll link this in the description. The second thing you need to know is that the campgrounds are generally spaced out every 35 to 45 miles all along the coast with the exception of Southern California when you start getting into the big city areas. When you decide whether or not to keep pedaling to the next campground, Keep in mind the elevation between the two places because I can almost guarantee if you decide to continue on to the next campground, you are gonna significantly increase your elevation gain for the day. The route is pretty hilly. So choose wisely before deciding whether or not to keep on pedaling. So now let's break it down state by state. I'm gonna let you know some of my favorite campgrounds some of the campgrounds to avoid, and some places that aren't exactly campgrounds that you definitely don't want to sleep on. Anyway, let's start with Washington. The first state park that comes to mind is Fort Warden State Park. This is about 90 miles south of the Canadian border. It's an old army base originally built to protect Puget Sound from invasion by sea. The campsite was near the water, it was large and flat, and generally just a pleasant place to camp. Kitsap Memorial State Park was another 30 miles past Fort Warden State Park. We lucked out and snagged the last spot. The trees were so tall and beautiful and the light was filtering in. There were some little hiking trails everywhere that led through the forest and this was definitely one of my favorite campgrounds on the entire trip. Next up is the Elma RV Park. Okay, so this one obviously isn't a state park, but it might be one of my favorite places we camped. Be sure to call ahead and let the owners know you're coming. The hosts let cyclists camp on the line behind the office. They even had some fresh chocolate chip cookies waiting for us when we arrived. Another favorite campsite of mine was at Lewis and Clark State Park, which is another 60 miles or so past Elma along the route. It was another one of those campsites that had awesome trees, beautiful ferns, and fun things to play on. Next up, let's talk about the Oregon campsites. It's pretty common knowledge amongst bike tourists on the Pacific Coast that Oregon has the best hiker biker spots by far, and it's true. Their campsites are incredible. Nehalem Bay State Park might have the best hiker biker sites along the entire Pacific Coast. The hiker biker camping area is huge. There's at least six or seven elevated tent pads for you to set up on. Each pad had its own picnic table. There was a locker area complete with USB charging ports and a toolkit station. And if you get tired of hanging around camp, the beach is just a very short walk away. There was a really cool place to stay in the tiny town of Yalhat. And I honestly can't remember if I'm pronouncing that right, but if not, just leave me a comment and let me know how you actually pronounce it. The day we rode through Yalhats, it was cold and rainy, and then we just happened to come across the Dublin house. You'll know you have the right place when you see the lighthouse, and you can actually stay in the lighthouse room. It was a fun little pick-me-up after a cold and wet day of riding. Bullard's Beach was another state park that we camped at in Oregon that was memorable. Do yourself a favor, you can't ride down the coast without booking a yurt. Harris Beach State Park was another park that had amazing hiker biker spots and they had the lockers with the USB charging stations. I didn't get a lot of pictures because I think I was dead after lots and lots of climbing that day and there was several other cyclists there that we were talking to and hanging out with. 
Last, let's talk about the camping situation in California. So California was either a hit or a miss. There were some amazing campsites with beautiful palm trees and beautiful beaches. And then there were some pretty cruddy campsites as well. Elk Prairie State Park in California was a hit. So it was true to its name. There were elk everywhere. Some of them had huge racks. They were just hanging out in the campground. Um, so that made it really fun and kind of entertaining, you know, sometimes you get to camp early and you get kind of bored sitting around, but the elk kept us entertained. When you get to the McKinleyville area of California, watch out for Clam State Beach Campground. I think that's the name of it. It's a tiny little campground right off the route and it looks like it's just in the sand. Um, it's hard to miss, but we rolled into there looking for the hiker biker spot because it is listed on the adventure cycling maps that it has one. We couldn't find it because it was just not marked and it was one of those places that looked like there may be some homeless people living there and so we just played it safe and we went to another local campground in town. It was probably the nicest campground in the area but that's not saying much because we basically camped in a field of weeds and there was a rotten picnic table half falling apart and the host was really nice though and she told us that the clam state beach campground has a lot of theft going on and it's probably not the best place to stay so even though we stayed in a cruddy place we were happy that we didn't stay at clam beach half moon state beach just past san francisco is also another really nice little spot campground wasn't huge the hiker biker spot was pretty good size it was really flat it had some trees that blocked the wind coming in from the ocean and it was just a nice little spot to camp there was i think a siren or something going on from a lighthouse all night um, but you get used to it another place that you do not want to miss in california is the costa noah campground this is a private campground it does not have hiker biker spots and it's something that you need to book ahead of time. I got lucky and just looked the day of and they happened to have a spot. Um, but the tent sites is basically in a little plot of land, but um, the campground is really nice. There's beautiful landscaping everywhere, stone buildings. They had a restaurant, a nice little camp store. I think they even have their own little community garden going on that you know the restaurant uses it's just a really neat little place the bathrooms were called comfort stations and I had never heard that before apparently that's a common thing but I found that hilarious and um, they had a fire going in the comfort stations kind of in the little lobby area and the comfort stations had hair dryers you could use and it was just luxurious Sunset State Beach campground was a big no <laughs> So we had an interesting experience. Um, it's actually not even on the beach. I'm sure the beach is really close, but we rode down way down to the bottom of the campground in this little valley and it was wooded and the campsite wasn't very nice. But the worst part is there was a tent city of migrant farmers who lived there probably for the better part of the year. And I'm talking there was probably over a hundred tents set up and um it was really loud all night long the you know they partied all night there was children and teenagers running around using foul language and just not being supervised and it, it felt a little unsafe it's not lost to me that these migrant workers are farming and harvesting the majority of our nation's produce but um it was just a little aggravating on their campground etiquette but I guess to them that was that's where they live so it was an interesting experience refugio state beach was another one that you have got to stay at um, when you're riding along the coast you can actually see it way down you're way up above it and you can kind of see it down below and it's it almost looks like an oasis or something there's beautiful palm trees the hiker biker spot was really flat and of course you know you had the beach views the palm trees there is a nice little camp store that you could walk to and get a popsicle or ice cream and you could walk along the beach and I would definitely recommend staying there. El Carpinteria State Beach and again I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right 
but um, it didn't have the nicest hiker biker spot, but it was, it did the job. It was just a little tiny plot of land. It was real flat, but they had beautiful boardwalks that you could go walk on and that in itself was worth staying there to me. Once you get into Southern California, near Malibu, LA, San Diego, there's basically not really any camping. There are a few RV parks. Most of them don't even allow tents. Um, there might have been one through there that let us camp. But for the most part, in you know the last 150 miles or so of the route, you're gonna be staying in hotels. And that can get pricey, but it's really the only option. So before we end, remember all of these campsites are listed on the Adventure Cycling Association maps. And I did a whole episode on that last week. So be sure to go check out my other episodes of Pacific Coast 101. I guess this wraps it up. I had originally planned to do four episodes, but I think this covers everything. If you have any questions about the Pacific Coast bike route, I would love to answer them in the comments. So um, just leave your questions below. We are actually headed to Utah very soon. So be on the lookout for a video about our trip to Utah. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. There were only a few hiker spiker bot <laughs> hiker spiker. <laughs> The hiker spiker. <laughs> like, why do I keep saying hiker spiker? <laughs> Bullard's beat. Bullard's. Ugh.